Now you might think with an absolute value function, the function will always appear above uh, the x-axis. Some examples of that, the absolute value of x plus 2, the absolute value of x squared minus 3, the absolute value of some sort of cubic, uh, and also the absolute value of sine x. You can see that they're all appearing above the x-axis. But just because you see an absolute value doesn't mean you're above the x-axis. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of that. Let's consider this function for a second. f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 3. Now, you already know what the absolute value of x plus 2 looks like x plus 2, that means it's crossing the y-axis at the point 2, and it has a gradient of 1, which means it's going to look like that, but it's an absolute value, so it bounces off the x-axis, or it reflects over the x-axis a little bit like that. Now, because it's a 45 degree angle there, we can say that that is uh, negative 2 there. But, what about this negative 3 here, and what does that do? Well, the negative 3 acts as a vertical shift, and it's going to move our entire function down by 3. So now we can say not 2, but negative 1 here. We can say that this point, which was originally um, negative 2, 0, will be our, now be negative 2, negative 3, somewhere about there. And I can draw my new function in like this. And that is an absolute value function below the x-axis. Now I can draw in my uh, x-intercepts there. Uh, that's going to be like negative um, 5. And that's going to be negative 1 there. Okay, so let's look at some absolute value functions with what's called a vertical shift. This is that same absolute value function, uh, f of x equals x plus 2. And if I add a number on the end or subtract a number from the end, you can see that I am shifting it down. And you've done uh, function transformation before. This is simply a function transformation as a vertical shift. And we can also move it up like that. Now, this will work for any absolute value function. So if I put that back to 0, now we consider x squared minus 3, so this is an absolute value function of a quadratic. If I add some value to that, it'll move up. The entire, entire thing will move up. And if I subtract some function from it, it will move down. And similarly, if I've got some wacky cubic, you can see that it's bouncing off an imaginary x-axis at that point, negative 1.3. But it's really just a vertical shift down to say negative 2 or up to 1. Uh, and of course we have our sine function which we can start off at our x-axis but we can also create a vertical shift up or a vertical shift down. All right so the process for sketching these it's fairly straightforward it's a three-step process. Uh, if f of x equals the absolute value of g of x plus d your first step is just to sketch g of x. That's step one. Now your next step is to uh, take all the negative values and turn them into positive values. So apply the absolute value. And then your next step is to um, shift by d, shift up or down by the letter d or the number d. Okay, that uh, those are absolute value functions with a vertical shift. Uh, time to just get stuck in, start sketching some.